Hello, Frontline. This is Val again. I am continuing the presentation on how HIV is transmitted. This is part two, and I'd like to talk about risks of HIV transmission from sexual behavior. So, unprotected receptive sex is the riskiest sex act, and that's, a, that's quite a mouthful to say. So, let's talk about what we mean by unprotected receptive sex. Unprotected means that there's no barrier, no latex or polyurethane barrier, um, that is that during sex there's an exposure to body fluids, someone else's body fluids, not just your own. Um, and receptive means that you're the one being penetrated, um, and this could be man, woman, or trans person. Uh, but any of these people can be the one being penetrated uh, and physiologically this increases the risk um, of HIV transmission because it increases the exposure to the, muco the mucous membranes inside the vagina, anus, or mouth. So like it says, HIV can enter the bloodstream very easily through the fragile skin in the vagina, anus, and mouth, those mucosal membranes. Uh, and this is going to mean that HIV has an easier door to open to get in. So here's a happy couple. Uh, they are humping. Uh, and the one with the square around her here is the receptive partner in this sex act. So the next risky sex act, the second riskiest sex act, is unprotected insert of sex. So again, unprotected means no latex barrier there, but insertive means that you're the one doing the penetrating. The penetrative partner, the insertive partner, uh, is also at risk if the sex is unprotected. No matter what you've heard, it's definitely risky to be the insertive partner during sex especially with sores, cuts, or piercings on penis or fingers, like any of those places that the um, HIV can get into the bloodstream, open cuts or sores, um, or uh, other direct routes into the bloodstream. So here's our happy couple again. As you might have expected, this is the insertive partner. Uh, and uh, we want them to hump away. We don't actually, can't actually tell if this is a protected sex act or not, but for the purposes of our argument, we're going to pretend it is uh, unprotected sex. So, obviously protected sex is safer than unprotected sex. Um, here's a, a condom on a rocket. Um, and vaginal, anal, oral sex that's done with a barrier, with protection, is a very good example of harm reduction. Uh, Barriers can be latex or polyurethane condoms, insertive condoms, dental dams, gloves, um, any of these uh, tools that we use to keep, keep ourselves from having an exposure to somebody else's blood, semen, vaginal fluids, or breast milk. So this is a really common sense approach. If you're going to have sex, do it as safely as you can, because we want you to have sex, but we don't want HIV to be transmitted. Now. No contact with body fluids equals no risk. Um, uh, even if you aren't in contact with fluids, it still counts as sex. Um, you know, oral sex is still sex. Uh, humping, dry humping, grinding, still sex, um, even if it's not in contact with fluids. Uh, and this can take many forms, from kissing to dry humping to abstaining altogether. Um, and using clean needles every time also means no contact with fluids. Uh, and uh, that's a bit of an aside because here we have heavy petting. Isn't that sweet? HIV cannot be transmitted by any of the following things. Here's some images to go along with them, but HIV cannot be transmitted by unbroken skin or through unbroken skin, can't be transmitted by kissing, hugging, eating after someone, sharing utensils, swimming in the same swimming pool, using the same toilet, shaking hands with someone, coughing, sneezing, spitting, or through mosquitoes. Uh, if any of you watching right now have questions about those things, or if you're not entirely sure, uh, then I welcome you to contact us. Uh, and uh, I hope that the information about how HIV is transmitted and how it's not transmitted helps to dispel some of your fear. Uh, I definitely look forward to working with you more. Uh, we'll see you then.